Welcome to Smarter Circuits. I'm your host, Ian Klein. I want to share with you a recent adventure in low voltage lighting I've been on. In my last video, or maybe it was the one before, who knows at this point, I talked about a couple that had reached out to me for help converting their low voltage system to a smart system. Unlike previous systems I'd helped troubleshoot, this was not the legacy systems of old. This was something new. Well, by new, I mean the house was built in 1991. The relay system that was installed used solid state relays just like the ones I used to convert the low voltage wires for my light switches to the 120 volt inputs of my Shelly relay modules. I want to take a moment to elaborate on why I use 120 volt inputs for my Shelly relays. If anyone out there has Shelly 1, 1 PM or 2.5 relays, they'll wonder why I didn't just power them with the 12 or 24 volt DC option and use the third wire to the switches as constant power. The reason is the Shelly 4 Pro module. I plan to replace all my smaller relays with these four Pros because I have the space and these are much cooler. I did a video on them and I'll probably do another more in-depth one soon. Back to our 91 system, which was also planned using the Shelly 4 Pro and only has two wires, not three like older systems to the switches. This is because of instead of momentary switches, this house has regular toggle switches. In fact, I did not see a single switch in this home that could not have been simply wired up in sequence the way most homes are today. They were all 120 volt, 10 or 15 amp rated light switches, just connected with much lighter gauge wire. You might wonder then, why didn't they just run regular wiring? Well, why run such heavy gauge wire when you don't need to? Also, this system gives more configuration options. Let's talk about that for a moment. What are the advantages of setting up low voltage lighting systems? Well, for starters, you generally need less of the heavier, more expensive wire in these systems. Another beautiful side effect of having a system like this is that you can easily reroute control circuits. Since the 120 volt wiring runs from the circuit breakers directly to a relay panel, then out to the circuits they control, you don't have to worry as much about running the heavy wires through the walls that wouldn't otherwise need them. Let's say you have a fixture in the middle of a room and outlets on two of the walls, but you want to put a switch on a wall with no outlet. Well, the way we do it now in most homes, you'd need to run a wire to that wall and then back to the fixture. Instead, you could run a much smaller gauge wire to the switch from a relay box. You might think this isn't much different, but if you've ever used thick solid core wire before, you know it's not the easiest thing to beat into submission at times. Also, there are much stricter guidelines in regards to how and where you can run these wires, and they're considerably more expensive. Another important point in favor of the low voltage approach, you can have as many switches as you want without worrying about three-way switches or special arrangements. You simply add another wire pair to the same terminals on the relay as the existing switch or switches and voila, you have another switch. You don't need special switches or wiring to run as many switches for one fixture or circuit as you'd like. Another great thing about this is that if you don't like which lights the switch controls, you can easily change this at the relay panel without having to dig through your walls or ceiling to route new heavy gauge wiring. It's cost effective, safer, and much, much more flexible. Add to this a little programmable logic and now you can take it a step further and control scenes based on times or use long, short, single, and double presses to do different things. You can do so many things, why not have those options available? These systems look scary to a lot of homeowners and real estate agents that aren't familiar with what a relay is for practical reasons, but the thing that surprises me more and more when I speak to owners of low voltage systems is how amazingly unaware or averse most electricians seem to be of them. A relay should not be a scary or off-putting thing to an electrician. They should be a comfort because it makes troubleshooting and wiring much easier. Perhaps they don't like how easily you can manipulate the system because if they're honest, they're not going to get the same amount of hours working on these as a standard system for simple tasks like adding a switch or replacing a relay. I suspect this is likely the case in many instances. Then there are cases where, for reasons beyond my comprehension, some electricians seem to be confused by what is going on in these panels to a dangerous degree. While I was in Louisiana looking at the 91 system, I ran into something absolutely mind-boggling to me. I started to take some video for the channel while I was there, but only managed to get a small bit you'll see in a moment because of what I found when I shot this. 
Okay, so I am here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, with uh, a homeowner who has a low voltage system with some very interesting issues. Um, this is the system that I spoke about in my other video, where I talked about somebody twisting wires together to continuously power relays and that sort of thing. It turns out it's actually much, much worse than that. Somebody has crossed two breakers that are on the opposite phases of their breaker creating a 240 line within this box. So we are going to have to disassemble this entire box and rebuild it component by component in order to fix this issue. Um, this is one reason why you should always make sure that each of your relays is on its own circuit and that you are not crossing hots or crossing neutrals because when you do, you will get some very unexpected results. Um, you could potentially be feeding 240 to something that is designed for 110. Um, and that is not good for a multitude of reasons I will discuss in another video. First, excuse my flipping back and forth between calling it 110 and 120 volt. It's the same thing for reasons. I'll talk about those reasons in another video, but for now, just know they mean the same thing. As I mentioned in the video, there was a crossed neutral feeding the hot from a breaker on opposing phase in the breaker panel. Someone wired the hot from a breaker onto a neutral in the box, which was isolated from the other neutrals, and so it didn't trip anything. This could have just created a dead circuit, but instead, because the hot that belonged to the neutral it was wired to was on an opposing phase, it created a 240 volt line with no 120 to ground. There are quite a few videos on YouTube explaining this, so here's one more. Inside your breaker box, you'll likely see some breakers occupy a single slot and some occupy two. The ones that occupy two can have one lever off to the side or two levers that are joined by a bar so they flip at the same time. These are double pole breakers. Coming into your home from the transformer are three big cables. One of these is called the center tap because it comes from the center of the secondary coil of the transformer. The secondary coil is split into two halves that turn the 240 volt into two opposing phases. I'm not going to get into phases in this video, but the simplest way to understand this is that the center and top make 120 volts. Center and bottom also makes 120 volts, and top and bottom makes 240 volts. In the breaker box, the bus bars that the cables coming from the transformer are connected to come down either side and have alternating fingers from either side so that every other breaker slot is on one bar and the ones between are on the other. This way, you can use two sequential slots to create a 240 line where you need one, usually for an appliance like a furnace or other heavy-duty thing. The mistake the electrician that worked on this system made could have been made on a non-low voltage system, but it would have been less likely simply because there's less places the circuit runs break with other runs. This doesn't excuse the electrician that made this error. This could have resulted in a fire or a fatality, surely, but I think that the person that did this might have been overwhelmed by the number of wires and perhaps had a gap in knowledge that prevented a full understanding of the system. This is still odd to me. In order to become a certified electrician, a person must complete thousands of hours of hands-on work and training with a master electrician in addition to taking multiple classes on things like electrostatics, calculations, equipment, and most importantly, power distribution systems. I say most importantly here because the power distribution systems you must be familiar with to be an electrician are far more complicated than this even looks with far more complex branches and layers. Another thing I want to make clear, current kills. Voltage isn't the thing that kills you, but it's related to the thing that kills you. By bypassing the 120 volt to ground circuit in this panel, the electrician doubled the amperage that would hit you and halved the time it would take, but I won't get into that, making this even more lethal. Also, some devices and components will survive being fed 240 instead of 120, but the ones that will fail will likely fail catastrophically, and those that don't will have their lifespan reduced significantly. On a side note, what I mentioned about the requirements for becoming a certified electrician, this is the reason I am not one. I have until recently had an established career in software, so I didn't have the time or practical need to become an electrician. Also, I would have to brush up on quite a few things that electricians do that aren't just inside the home or in your friendly neighborhood 7.2 kilovolt step-down distribution transformer. 
I would love to be an electrician, among other things, like an HVAC technician, but it takes about three years and it's not a good move for me at the moment financially. So I'll continue to offer my consulting services developing solutions to low voltage lighting systems. Work I do with homeowners is with the accepted risk that the homeowner themselves takes working on their own system. And when possible, I prefer to work through an electrician, which is mostly what I did prior to traveling. If you are in need of my consultation, be it answering a few questions, preparing diagrams or plans with your electrician, or coming on site to help you understand your system, please reach out to me. This is currently my full-time job, this channel and these gigs, so if you like my videos and think I should be a guy who eats, consider reaching out. I will be sharing the story of a second home that I visited in Michigan after I finish working with the homeowner to solve their much different issue. Here's a sneak peek at something I got to see in person for the first time a Remcon fixture mounted relay with its own internal transformer and thermal switching device. No coil relay, the same kind of thing that used to make turn signals flash before modern circuitry, but I digress. More on that system in a future video. I do hope you enjoyed the video, and of course if you did enjoy it and haven't already done so, please do subscribe to the channel. If you want to know what's going on between episodes, you can follow Smarter Circuits on Twitter, at Circuits Smarter, and if you'd like to help make more and better videos possible, consider becoming a patron on our Patreon page linked below. Thanks for listening to me ramble, and I do hope you'll join me for future videos as I continue exploring Smarter Circuits.